Yeah, hey, Chris, uh, we haven't talked to you since. So just what went into your decision to return for a sixth year? Uh, part of it was being able to learn from a bunch of NFL coaches. I feel like if I had went into the draft this year, I might not have gone where I wanted to. So knowing that Coach Saban was going to bring in some really reliable guys who have some good experience, I feel like it'd be just as good as going to the next level because I can still get that same tutoring and I can learn those same lessons before I, like, I ultimately make that decision. Stephen M, go ahead. Chris, you, Chris, you got an offensive line with a bunch of young guys on there, but how has JV on Cohan been progression as somebody that's got some experience so far? JV on Cohan. Uh, JV has been doing good. All of our young guys have been doing good. We've been moving people around every day, and that's part of what spring is, just trying to figure out who can play, who can take the meetings and bring them to the field. So he's been doing well, and everyone else has been trying to keep him along with us. But I feel like the more that we go on in the spring, we just build more chemistry, and ultimately that will help us in the long run. Tony, go ahead. Hey, Chris. As a guy that's bounced around a, a bunch from position to position like yourself, how are you able to do that, to, to help young players do that? And are you able to kind of give them a, a – guiding presence, you know, for some of the freshmen that might be playing at a new position for the first time? Yeah, it was something that was going on before I got here. So when I got out of high school, it was just kind of the thing, like, Coach Saban's going to figure out who's the best five on the field, regardless of if you came in as a tackle, if you play guard, whatever it is, we just want the best five on the field. So that's something I've been used to. And I think everyone's kind of come, become accustomed to that happening, especially in the springtime, because they just want to see who can play ball. So. It's something we're all doing, and I feel like people see me doing it, and I just – they feel comfortable knowing that it's not only them, it's everyone. Mike Rodak, you're next. Chris, you mentioned the the NFL aspect to your decision. You have a, a former NFL coach um, coaching your position right now. What sort of feedback has he given you, and, and what's it been like uh, working with, uh, with Doug Marone so far? He's great. He has – all sorts of stories going back from Syracuse to when he played for my favorite team or when he coached for my favorite team, the Saints. Like that was one of the first things that we clicked on was he was naming offensive linemen from that team. So, and of course he coached Cam Robinson who was here. He's coached a lot of great players. And I think the lessons that he has dating all the way back to before I was even born, those are still applicable for today. So I just get to talk to him every day and he, gives his wisdom to everybody and he's open about it. He doesn't give priority just to the older guys or the younger guys. He's open with everyone, walk-ons, fifth, sixth, and anyone. So just having him around the facility every day and getting to pick his brain is amazing. Michael Casagrande, you're next. Yeah, Chris, who, who won the scrimmage, offense or defense? Alabama. Next question. Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, just going back to the younger guys, Coach Saban said that some of the young guys' heads were sort of swimming early on. Just how do you as a veteran help them out with learning the playbook this spring? One of the things I try to do is just tell everyone to be patient. Like, we're not going to be where we're supposed to be right now because it's only the middle of the springtime, especially on offense. We have a lot of guys that return, receiver, tight end, new O-line, new quarterback. Like, everything's new for us. And we're going against a really good defense every day, so – for us, it's just about being patient and trusting the process and knowing that things are going to come along eventually. But we just can't rush them, so we have to take everything day by day. Stephen M., go ahead. Chris, how have you seen Brian Robinson be more vocal, not just with the running backs, but for the entire offense? Yeah, he's he's done a good job of that. He knows that he's one of the older guys on the team, and we're going to need everyone, so – He's been around for a while. He's played for a long time, pretty much played every year since he's been here. And him being vocal is something that's going to be needed on the team. Any more questions for Chris? All right. Thank you, Chris. Next up is Jalen Moody. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have any questions for Moody. All right, we got Jalen Moody. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Jalen. Um, just want to take you back to last season real quick. Just what was it like stepping in for Christian at Arkansas, and, and what did you learn from that experience? Um, 
it was a it was a good experience, you know, going out there playing, having an opportunity to, you know, show what I what I learned and improve throughout this season. Um Christian a good player, you know, he, he went down and so coach always say, you know, next man up and be ready whenever your time is calling. Um I think I did a good job of that. Michael Casagrande, go ahead. Yeah, Jim, what do you remember about your uh, your recruitment to Alabama? I think you were a late uh, commitment signing. What was what was that process like, and uh, you know how did it work out? Um, I remember when Alabama came. They it came, and, I think, got me right before signing day. Uh, that was really good. You know, I talked to my parents about it. You know, a lot. You know, a lot of my friends were excited to see me get an offer from Alabama. Um, you know, and it's, it's Bama. You know, they known for winning, known for getting guys. You know, saying to the to the next level and developing players, and so. I feel like it was a no-brainer for me to come here, you know, just come here, develop, be the player that I know I can be, and um, get a chance to show everybody what I can do. Stephen M., go ahead. Jalen, where have you felt like you've grown the most, you know, since you've been at Alabama as a player on the field? Um, I think I, I grew, you know, just the game, you know what I'm saying, learning the game, the real, the real nitty-gritty, you know what I'm saying, the trenches as of coverages, you know what I'm saying, uh, the fronts. How to how to also just do my job as well, you know, play play between the plays, you know what I'm saying? Not getting in and out of situations or getting too too frustrating situations, but also just understanding what my assignment is and also just making the plays when it comes to me and also knowing how to set up other guys too when it when it's time for them to make plays as well. Tony, you're next. Jalen, how how's your chemistry like with Christian Harrison? Also, just how important is that to have pretty good chemistry with the guy you're next to on defense? Uh, I would say me and Christian, you know, we're really close. That's like my my little brother out there, man. We we hang out a lot off the field as much as we do on the field. You know, we talk about plays all the time, about how we could have did this better, how we could have did that better. And um, I think, you know what I'm saying, chemistry between two guys, you know what I'm saying, playing side by side is very important. You know, being able to, to know what I'm going to think on the field or know what he's going to do and, how we play and react off each other, you know, I think that's a big process of, of being a good player and, a, you know what I'm saying, having a good defense and just everybody knowing how to play off each other and make plays off each other. Charlie, you're next. Yeah, Jalen, you just called Christian your your little brother. Is it kind of strange for you to look around the inside linebacker room and, and realize you're the old guy in there now? And kind of piggybacking off that, do you want to take more of a leadership role on this spring and this offseason? Uh, I definitely feel like um, – I'm trying to, you know, step into that role of being a leader in the inside room, definitely being a, the only senior in the uh, inside linebacker room right now. Um, and I mean, we got other guys as well, you know, that can can step up and do as much as I'm doing, you know. And um, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, like I said, we've been, we've been doing a good job as everybody, you know what I'm saying, stepping into their own roles and, you know what I'm saying, being a man in their own roles and, you know what I'm saying, being accountable. Stephen M., you're next. Speaking of that chemistry, Jane, and how's that chemistry like with you and Shane Lee? How has he progressed this spring? Shane Lee been doing really good. I mean, I, I love to see where he's at. He's been very explosive, very fast, you know, getting better every day. And, you know what I'm saying, the sky's the limit for that guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he's a great player, very smart, and has a good head on his shoulder. Michael Casagrande, go ahead. Yes, Alabama came in late in that recruiting process. Did you, did you have an idea where you might have gone if they wouldn't have? And have you ever thought about what that, you know, how things would have been different if Alabama didn't come around? I believe Crimson, and I don't, I don't know no other school but but Alabama. Tony Sakalos, go ahead. Yeah, um, we talked a little bit with Christian about the quarterback in the defense. You're a guy that's been in the system a long time, too. Is is that something you're capable or feel confident in if called on to do as well? quarterback in the defense quarterback of the defense um I mean like I said we have guys that have been here have numerous years now you know have a lot of experience and so anybody can step in as that road and be a, a signal caller I feel like you know we we have a lot of guys like I said with tremendous experience and a, a lot of talent and so all of us do our part you know what I'm saying to, to help out you know I really don't feel like there's no specific simple signal caller out there on the field but I mean like I said we we have a lot of guys that can definitely step in that role and, and definitely do that. Mike Rodak, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned how you, you bleed crimson and, and you kind of gotten your chance now in your fourth year. Nick Saban likes to talk about waiting your time and, and developing. Was there ever any frustration over the years that you weren't getting playing time? And I guess is it almost a 
a validation that now you've gotten to this point, you have a chance to have some major playing time? Uh, I wouldn't really call it frustration. You know, I just feel like, like you said, you know, the coach is known for, you know what I'm saying, waiting your turn and, you know what I'm saying, do the process, go through the process. And so I just did that, you know what I'm saying, stayed the course, keep working and grinding every day. And when my opportunity is called, I try to take full advantage of it. Any other questions for Jalen? All right, that'll conclude today.